Today on Energy Contact. People talk about how the human spine is improperly engineered and about how we're supposed to walk on all fours. But it's all wrong. Our spines are engineered just fine. We're just using them wrong. And then we're blaming God or nature or something for our misuse. According to ancient mystics, if you can get a mystical energy called kundalini to come up from the earth and rise up your spine and come out the top of your head, you become enlightened. Today, we'll see that this spiritual enlightenment moves up through your physical self, but only after we get our spines all right. So prepare yourself for complete consciousness. It's coming up right now on Energy Contact. Hello, and welcome to Energy Contact. My name is Joseph Willenbrink. Thank you for joining me today, and thank you to the production staff here in the studio for helping me get my message out to you. Energy Contact is a series that I'm presenting as a public service. It's about attaining perfect health, growth, self-improvement, happiness, and it's about realizing your full potential. It's designed to present you a new way of seeing yourself and seeing the world around you. We're talking about things that have to do with making an energetic contact, energetic contact with yourself internally and with the environment. There's no difference between the body and the mind, the spirit, the emotion, the intellect, the ego. There's no difference between mass and energy. We love to categorize and separate them, but there's just no difference. Einstein told us that years ago, and we're still learning to believe it. So that health and that growth and all that self-improvement comes when we make energetic contact, when we take that unseen energetic world and make it contact our physical selves. We're presenting on these programs a brand new paradigm, a brand new paradigm that's thousands of years old. We're presenting extraordinary topics for ordinary people. And let's move forward with that right away and put up our first slide. Everyone please know that I am not a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor, and that this is in no way a medical advice show. If you want some medical advice, go to a doctor. I call myself an energy healer or a chakra healer, and uh, so do a lot of other people. But state, federal, and local governments do not. There's important information on this slide here, so we're going to leave it up for a couple of seconds. Please read it with all awareness. And as you get it down, I'll ask you to do me another favor if you would. Please locate a pencil and paper. At the end of the show we're going to roll some credits and on those credits is going to be contact information for me. I invite you to contact me. I hope you will. But in order to do that you're going to need my contact information. In order to get that you're going to need a pencil and paper. And if you wait till the end of the show you might not have time. All right, thanks. Let's come back up here. Today's show is show number 21. If you're tuning in for the first time today, thank you. Thank you and welcome. There's a lot of information on this show of value to you, so I hope you'll stay here. These shows are sequential, so we are working with information today that we've presented in previous shows. But I, do, I work very hard to make each show complete in its own right, and we'll, we'll review the things that need to be reviewed, such like that. So, uh, so please do stick around. And if what you see piques your interest, then I uh, encourage you to look for previous shows uh, airing at later times, either here in this neighborhood or perhaps in different cable service uh, neighborhoods where your friends are. All right, and now finally, it is with great pride and pleasure that I introduce my co-host to you. This is my co-host, Slim. Slim is here to uh, help us explain a little bit about our physical self. Since we're investigating what energy contacts in the physical self, 
we have to understand a couple of things, don't we? We have to understand energy. But energy out there doesn't do us mu much good. We need to understand what it is that the energy contacts. SLIM is helping us do that. Remember, a body without energy is just a corpse. Energy without a body, it might be a number of things, but it's not human. Okay, previously on energy contact, we have been discussing a lot about the body intellect, about the anatomy that is built by our thought. We've been talking about how the same materials in our brains that give us thought, recall, reason, memory, logic, intellect, all those things we think of as brain things, well, they're in every cell of our body. And that body intellect all through our body is what builds us the way we are and it's what makes us think the way we think. We've been talking about the internal and the external forces that shape us. The internal forces we can think of as the forces that animate us. Breath, pulse, rhythm, vibration, frequency. And the external forces, oh, primarily, are gravity, entropy, and energy, the part of energy that's, uh, that's outside of us. We've seen previously that the skeleton doesn't hold us together. We've always learned that the skeleton is our framework that holds us together, but it doesn't. We hold the skeleton together. That's why my buddy Slim here needs screws and bolts, and we don't. Bones are spacers. They create distance. And we've learned recently that until we make our pain go away, we can't concentrate on anything else. We always take care of our most basic need first, even if that more basic need is contrived. That's why so many of us aren't growing and progressing, because we can't get past our own pain. And we've observed what all of this has to do with our core. Well, today, we're moving forward a little bit. We're changing gears, and we're finally starting to climb out of that core we've been talking about for so many shows. In order to do that, we're going to have to go back and review a lot of stuff. A lot of information on anatomy and uh, a few other things that we talked about a long time ago. So today, we're going to do a lot of anatomy. And we want to do that so we can sort of refresh it, combine it with more recent things, and move forward. But today, we're moving back to our basic horizontal and vertical structures. Primarily, our spine and our pelvis, and even more primarily, our spine. We've seen what our core and our psoas is doing with these basic structures. But what else is going on, huh? There's got to be some other stuff going on. What does all of this stuff have to do with our aching backs and our sore necks? What other anatomy is working with our psoas and our pelvis and those pelvic floor muscles? What do gravity and entropy have to do with it? What can we do about it? We are learning that everything is somatic. Somatic means of the body. Our entire spiritual, emotional, intellectual database is locked into every cell of our body. But now this is the part of the show where we take our virtual field trip, our journey in our mind's eye. So come with me if you will. Today we are going to a tire store. Oh, I don't know why we're there. Maybe you need new tires, you need to get rotated and balanced and aligned, all that stuff they do at those places. So we're just there sitting in the waiting room and you notice outside that there's a fellow stacking up tires on the ground. All right, uh, as you know, these tire stores have very high ceilings because they've got the cars going up on lifts. And if you think about it, they usually have a shelf up close to that high ceiling where they uh, store some of their tires and stuff. This is one of those places. But now this guy's just stacking tires from the floor up. And as he stacks them, you notice they're slightly off center. And you say something to him about it. But he tells you, look, I'm in this business, I know what I'm doing. And so you let it go. And you know what? He seems to be right, because as that stack is finished, it looks pretty stable. It looks pretty steady. You even go up after he walks away and slap it a little bit, push it a little bit. And it seems to be doing just fine. But after a while, he returns, and he's returning looking up at that top shelf. 
and he doesn't see the ladder around. So he decides, maybe in an effort to prove to you how stable those tires are, to scale those tires like a ladder and climb up the top of them to get up to that top shelf. And he does. And they are still amazingly stable. And you're just observing. But finally, he's up at the top. And he's standing on that top tire. And he's reaching up to the shelf. And then it happens. Those, that stack starts wavering. And then, you guessed it, everything comes tumbling down. Well, fortunately, those uh, tires are also great shock absorbers. So other than his pride, nobody's hurt. Nobody's getting hurt today on energy contact. But bear in mind, before we leave this visualization, that energy falls up, gravity falls down, and entropy, which we'll explain a little bit later, falls apart. Think about that guy falling from those tires, and you'll see that all three of those events have taken place. But now, let's come back from our virtual field trip and see what all this has to do with our anatomy. We have seen that energy falls up from the earth and that the psoas muscle controls the way our pelvis relates to our legs and then the way our spine relates to our pelvis. We used the example of, on a previous show of how striking a, medical pole, a metal pole on the bottom will send reverberations all the way up the spine or all the way up the pole. It is analogous to what happens every time we take a step. Every time we contact the earth, little vibrations go up legs, then pelvis, then spine, right up to the stem of our brain. Well, what do they pass through on the way? Well, let's bring up a slide, and we'll see what they pass through. They pass through everything. Bring up that slide of cells and atoms. They pass through everything, including 10 trillion cells worth of body intellect. There it is, including 7 billion, billion, billion worth of atoms of body intellect. Those reverberations pass through 206 bones and 630 muscles worth of body intellect on their way up the spine. Remember, atoms are all the same and cells are all different. Just like instincts are all the same, but reactions are all different. And there may be 206 bones that it's passing through, but today we're focusing primarily on a couple. So let's look at them and bring up the next slide. And here you'll see the pelvis and the spine, our main horizontal and our main vertical structures. That spine there, you see a front and a side view, you'll notice that uh, it's labeled. We have uh, coming from the top down, seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, and five lumbar vertebrae. We'll come right back to that in a second. Now, let's look at all of our vertical and horizontal structures for a second. And to do that, we'll come back over to Slim. So let's bring Slim up, and we'll see Slim's vertical and horizontal structures. Slim has basically three vertical and three horizontal structures. Let's get Slim on here. Um, there he comes. We don't need to go all the way down to Slim's feet, but his three horizontal structures are his feet, his pelvis, and his shoulders. And his three vertical structures are his legs, you can see the top of them, his spine, and his neck. It's kind of a trick because his neck really is his spine. So, those Seven, actually we'll spin slim around here a little bit, those seven cervical vertebrae, those 12 thoracic vertebrae, and those five lumbar vertebrae are all slim's basic vertical, main vertical structure. It's obvious, huh, uh, just as an aside, that we are vertical creatures. Slim here is five foot eight inches tall, but he's only a foot wide or so. And so our vertical structures give us length and our horizontal structures are smaller, but they tend to be a little bulkier, a little stronger. Uh, another aside, when you uh, hear somebody has a back injury and they say, uh, oh, it's a back injury at T5, all that T means is thoracic. Our thoracic vertebra are the ones that have ribs on them. You've got 12 thoracic vertebrae, 12 ribs. And so you just count down from the top. All right. Our sacrum, by the way, 
is very important because our sacrum is where our main vertical structure seats in to our main horizontal structure at the sacroiliac joint. There's a lot of stuff going on there. And because of all that humongous weight load, a lot of people have back pain there. All right. So that's got us for slim. Now we're going to go back and look some more slides. We're going to go through a couple of them very quickly. Let's bring up the next one. And we're going to look at what's holding that vertical structure on the horizontal structure. There is our friend the psoas muscle. You see there on the, on the side where the psoas muscle is on the pelvis there, those little rib things, those things that look like stacked spools there, that's your vertebra. So you can tell how that psoas muscle holds it in shape. And now moving forward to the next one, we'll see a, a side view of the pelvis and the psoas muscle. And we'll see that it's the pitch of the pelvis. Let's move forward to that next one. It's the pitch of the pelvis, there it is, in partnership with that strength and power of the psoas muscle. That psoas muscle is the red thing there that determines the structure of the entire top of us. Can you sort of imagine there what a pull on that red muscle would do to those little cubes there? That's your vertebra. Okay, the psoas muscle controls how the spine seats into the pelvis right there at that sacroiliac joint. And now let's move right directly to the next slide. And we'll see how the tips of the pelvis, the way the pelvis tips forward or backwards, shapes everything. You can see how it shapes these people, and it shapes your spine. Imagine, if you can, right where you are, just stand up. And uh, stand up and do that hula hoop motion. Push your, your hips way forward, and then push your hips way back. And pay attention to your spine. It shapes the way what your spine is doing. After that, take a few steps. Push your hips forward and walk a few steps. Feel how funny that feels. Push your hips back in that sort of duck butt position. Take a few steps. See how funny that feels. All right, let's come back here. So, all that stuff is going on at the foundation of the spine. But a lot of what the spine does is up at the top, huh? Our heads weigh about six and a half pounds. And our shoulder girdle, which includes our shoulder blades and our collarbones and our arms and stuff, weighs another 15 pounds or so. That means that the top of our spine is holding, oh, more or less about 25 pounds or so, constantly, every moment we're standing up. Remember that stack of tires? It did fine supported from its foundation by the earth. It's when that weight got on the top of it is when things went, things went south, huh? literally and figuratively. So there are muscles that move up our spine to help manage what's going on at the top here. What muscles? Funny you should ask. They're called our erector spinae muscles. Erector spinae muscles, some people refer to them as our paraspinal muscles. Both names are very descriptive. Erector spinae means hold your spine erect. Paraspinal, para basically means around, the muscles around the spine. We'll look at them in just a second. And just exactly what qualifies as an erector spinae muscle is up in the air. There's also another muscle right beneath them called the multifidus muscle. Uh, these names are not important. But these are the things that stabilize our upper spine. By the way, our erector spinae muscles have names like uh, iliocostalis longissimus, spinalis, spinalis thoracus. Sounds like the cast of a, uh, one of those Colosseum movies. Um, anyway, don't be too impressed by those names. Uh, they don't matter. If you want to know bone names and muscle names, take a good anatomy course. That's not what we're doing here. But what we are doing is looking at erector spinae muscles. And I'll show you sort of on slim. We can see just from right here, these muscles, as you know, muscles are sort of like rubber bands. They don't push. Muscles don't know how to push. They pull. My muscles here aren't quite long enough, but they basically go all the way from the top, right along this spine here. And they, their job is to provide stability so the top of us can sort of rock and roll a little bit. But we are using our erector spinae muscles improperly most of the time. What we are doing 
is we are using those erector spinae muscles to hold us upright, to do this. Do you know what a cantilever is? A cantilever is like the strings of a drawbridge. And we use these muscles to cantilever us up, to pull our backs up like a drawbridge. But that's not what they're designed for. They're not, uh, they're not strong enough for that. Let's go right to another slide here, and you'll take a look at the erector spinae muscles in some pictures here. You can see that first slide. A few of you may remember some shows back we looked at the quadratus lumborum muscle. Well, there it is deep in the spine. Right on the other side of that, if you can see through it, is the psoas muscle going in the front. But then right next to that, you see those initials there that stand for erector spinae, multifidus, and quadratus lumborum, respectively. And then on the far side, you see a little bit more technical view of those erector spinae muscles. Let's go right to the next slide, and you'll see a more medical school drawing of them. You see there where it says intermediate layers, those are the erector spinae muscles going up each side of our back. They're just almost like belts. They're like big rubber bands. And then on the other side, uh, you'll see right next to the spine, that very long muscle right next to the spine is the multifidus muscle. So these muscles are not designed to hold us upright. What are they designed for? Stabilization. And if they aren't holding, if they're not supposed to be holding our spines up, then what is? Well, gravity, which we're quite busy fighting with. Let's come back here. By pulling and, and releasing those muscles in that drawbridge fashion all of our life, it shortens them and then it sort of hyper stretches them, like the elastic on an old pair of underwear. And they get shorter and stretched out as time goes by. It's noteworthy that weightlifting strengthens muscles, but also strengthens them. It's why so many weightlifters have precisely that no neck look. And why they wake up in their 40s with hemorrhoids and a heart condition, and then they're wondering, well, I've taken such good care of myself for so many years, how could this happen to me? They've been taking care of themselves? Maybe not. But for now, before we leave this little aside, know that a lot of weightlifters come to me because they're trying to figure out how to be strong and flexible and healthy all at the same time. And there's a way to do it, but their trainer doesn't know it. We're going to talk a whole lot about this in the near future. But for now, let's focus on our spines. We've seen that the muscles of our spine are not meant to support our spine. Gravity is supposed to do it. Well, how does that work? Remember that one picture with those old, um, with those psoas muscles holding our spine? And I said those spines looked like spools. I am building right here on our stage a spine. This is the way your spine is supposed to stack up. And just like these DVD cases here, your spinal, your vertebrae, they do sort of seat into each other. They've got connections. So how much trouble do these spools have sitting on top of each other? None. Well, now imagine they were a stack of tires. Would you feel safe on top of them? You know what? I would. I'd feel safe on top of them. What holds that top spool, what holds this top spool steady? What holds it steady on the bottom spool? Gravity. That's all. Just gravity. If we had a building where they wouldn't be disturbed and an old closet, and we set these spools back in the corner on the floor in a closet, and went away for 85 years, what would we see when they came back? We'd see this. They'd be exactly the same. What's holding them there? Nothing. Nothing other than gravity. Imagine I had a big thick rubber band to put around them. Um, it's a little more taxing than we're prepared to do on uh, energy contact today. Would that rubber band hold them up? Of course it wouldn't hold them up. It doesn't need to. Gravity's doing it. Would it provide them a little st stability left and right? 
Yes, it would. That's what it would do. It would provide a little stability in case the earth rocked and rolled, in case they grew legs and wanted to run somewhere. Just a little stability. It would not be a drawbridge cable. And so when we use our erector spinae muscles like a drawbridge cable, we fight gravity. I'm going to deconstruct our spine. Hopefully I'll do this. If you hear a loud crashing sound, it'll take you back to the uh, tire store. That's all there is to it. That's the way our spines are supposed to work. It's as simple as that. All right. When we use our erector spinae muscles, like a drawbridge, we fight gravity instead of cooperating with it. And when we fight gravity, we lose. And when we lose, entropy takes over. Here's your quick entropy rev review. All you need to know about entropy is this. I can take a drinking glass and throw it down on the sidewalk and get a thousand pieces. But I cannot take a thousand pieces of glass and throw them down on the sidewalk and get a drinking glass. Things fall apart. They don't fall together. You can put things together, but it takes work. And so that is the beginning of what happens when we fight gravity. We bring entropy in, and things go crazy. And if you go down to a retirement village in Florida, you'll see uh, evidence of it. Uh, my show won't air in Florida, so uh, I'm out of trouble. We've seen that the psoas can overcontract. We've seen that for shows. And it sets up a chain reaction. What happens is it pulls the spine forward, which starts the erector spinae muscle starting that drawbridge motion. But you know what else happens? That contracting psoas pulls the stomach muscles. They're called rectus abdominis muscles. It pulls them down, drops the rib cage, and it covers the diaphragm so we can't breathe. And breath is life. Then that descended rib cage pulls down these neck muscles. They're called scalene muscles. And then this goes down like this, and that overstretches all of those back muscles, which starts the erector spinae trying to pull us back again. And then we're all twisted and turned, and then they just give out, like that old elastic on the pair of underwear. When our main vertical structure is compromised, we're less than vertical. And that's about all the time we have to talk about it today, but we're going to come back more next time, and we'll talk a little more about it. Until then, get out your pencils. Here come the credits. I wish you peace and positive energy and a healthy life in energy contact.